When people talk about Linux on the desktop, one of the first things that comes up is choice. And nowhere is that choice more visible than in desktop environments. A desktop environment is not just a graphical shell. It is the entire user experience, the way you interact with files, windows, settings, notifications, and even your workflow habits. Ranking Linux desktop environments from worst to best is always subjective because different users value different things, but there are still common patterns that emerge when we look at stability, performance, usability, community support, customization, accessibility, and long-term sustainability. This ranking is not meant to insult any project or its users, but rather to analyze where each environment tends to struggle and where it shines, especially for the average desktop user in 2025. At the very bottom of most rankings, you will usually find desktop environments that are either largely abandoned, extremely niche, or simply impractical for modern desktop usage. One such environment often mentioned is Trinity Desktop Environment. Trinity is essentially a continuation of the old KDE3 codebase, kept alive by a small but passionate community. While there is something admirable about preserving classic software, Trinity feels frozen in time. Modern hardware support is limited, high DPI scaling is awkward, Wayland support is non-existent, and many modern applications feel out of place. For users who grew up with KDE3 and want a nostalgic experience on older hardware, Trinity can still work, but for most people it feels outdated, visually inconsistent, and increasingly incompatible with modern Linux ecosystems. The lack of momentum and small developer base make it hard to recommend except for very specific use cases. Another desktop environment often ranked near the bottom is LXDE in its original form. LXDE was once celebrated for being extremely lightweight and fast, especially on low-end systems. However, Development on LXDE has largely stopped in favor of LXDE, which uses QT instead of GTK. As a result, LXDE today feels unfinished and fragmented. Many distributions have dropped it, and those that still offer it often do so without much polish. The user experience can feel bare bones to the point of being uncomfortable with limited configuration tools, outdated theming, and inconsistent behavior. While LXDE can still be fast, its lack of active development and future direction makes it a poor choice compared to newer lightweight alternatives. CDE, or Common Desktop Environment, also deserves mention in the lowest tier. CDE is a relic from Unix workstations of the 1990s. While it can technically be run on Linux today, it is more of a curiosity than a practical desktop environment. The visuals are archaic, usability standards are decades behind, and integration with modern Linux applications is extremely limited. CDE exists mostly for enthusiasts, historians, or those recreating legacy environments. For everyday desktop use, it simply does not make sense. Moving slightly up the ranking, we reach desktop environments that are functional but have significant drawbacks that limit their appeal. One example here is Enlightenment. Enlightenment is visually striking and incredibly customizable with smooth animations and unique design concepts. However, it has long struggled with consistency and stability. Settings are scattered across many modules. Terminology can be confusing, and basic tasks sometimes require more effort than they should. Application compatibility can also be hit or miss, and some users report bugs that persist for years. Enlightenment can feel like a work of art rather than a practical tool, and while some users absolutely love it, many others find it frustrating to live with on a daily basis. Another environment that often lands in this lower middle tier is Sugar. Originally designed for educational purposes, especially for children through the one laptop Per child project. Sugar emphasizes activities rather than traditional applications and work. While its intentions are admirable, Sugar feels alien to most desktop users. The interface is not intuitive for conventional tasks like file management or multitasking, and the ecosystem of applications is limited. Sugar is excellent for its intended audience, but as a general purpose Linux desktop, it falls short. Next, we move into the middle of the ranking, where desktop environments are solid, usable, and actively maintained, but still have notable compromises. LXQT fits well here. LXQT is the spiritual successor to LXDE and aims to be lightweight while using modern QT libraries. Compared to LXD, LXQT is far more actively developed and integrates better with modern systems. However, it can still feel somewhat sparse and less polished than heavier desktop environments. Configuration options are improving, but some features require manual tweaking or third-party tools. For users with low-end hardware who still want something modern, LXQT is a good option, but it does not offer the cohesive, 
refined experience that many users expect today. Mate is another desktop environment that often sits in the middle of rankings. Mate is a fork of GNOME 2 and focuses on providing a traditional desktop experience. Its greatest strength is also its biggest limitation. Machi is stable, predictable, and familiar, but it does not push innovation. While it has gradually adopted newer technologies, it still feels conservative in design and functionality. Performance is decent, customization is reasonable, and the learning curve is low, making it a good choice for users who want something simple and reliable. However, compared to more modern environments, Mate can feel dated and less exciting. XFC also typically lands in this middle tier, though many users might argue it deserves higher. XFC is known for its balance between performance and usability. It is lightweight, fast, and highly configurable without being overwhelming. The panel system, window manager, and settings tools are well thought out. The main criticism of XFCE is its slow pace of development. Visual modernization takes time. Wayland support is still a work in progress, and some features feel behind the curve. Still, XFCE remains one of the most dependable desktop environments, especially for users who want speed and control without excessive complexity. Cinnamon is another environment often placed in the middle to upper range. Developed by the Linux Mint team, Cinnamon aims to provide a modern yet traditional desktop experience. It feels familiar to Windows users while still offering Linux Evil customization. Cinnamon is visually attractive, feature-rich, and tightly integrated within the Linux Mint ecosystem. However, it can be heavier on system resources compared to XFC or Mate, and performance on low-end hardware may suffer. Outside of Linux Mint, Cinnamon can sometimes feel less polished, though it is still very usable. Cinnamon's steady development and focus on user comfort make it a strong contender even if it does not appeal to those seeking cutting-edge design. Pantheon, the desktop environment developed by Elementary OS, often sits around this area as well. Pantheon is praised for its clean, elegant design and attention to detail. It offers a cohesive user experience with consistent applications and a strong visual identity. However, Pantheon is also quite opinionated. Customization options are limited by design, and users who like to tweak every aspect of their desktop may feel constrained. Pantheon works best within elementary OS, and outside of it, installation and integration can be more challenging. For users who value aesthetics and simplicity over flexibility, Pantheon can be wonderful, but it is not universally appealing. As we move into the upper tier, we encounter desktop environments that are widely respected, actively developed, and suitable for a broad range of users. Budgie is one such environment. Originally developed by the Salus project, Budgie offers a modern desktop with a clean layout and thoughtful features. It strikes a nice balance between simplicity and customization, with a panel-based workflow that feels familiar yet refined. Budgie integrates well with GNOME technologies while maintaining its own identity. While its development pace has fluctuated and future direction has sometimes seemed uncertain, Budgie remains a polished and pleasant environment for daily use. Deep in Desktop Environment, or DDE, also often ranks high due to its stunning visuals and user-friendly design. Deepin offers one of the most visually impressive Linux desktops, with smooth animations, a modern control center, and a cohesive set of applications. However, concerns about privacy, security, and transparency have affected its reputation, particularly because it is developed by a China-based company. Additionally, performance can be an issue on lower-end systems. Despite these concerns, from a purely desktop experience perspective, Deepin is attractive, intuitive, and powerful. Now we reach the very top tier, where the most influential and capable Linux desktop environments reside. KDE Plasma is frequently ranked either first or second, depending on personal preference. Plasma has evolved tremendously over the years and is now one of the most feature-rich and customizable desktop environments available on any operating system. It offers a modern look, excellent performance, and an astonishing level of flexibility. Users can tailor nearly every aspect of their workflow, from panels and widgets to window behavior and shortcuts. KDE Plasma supports both X11 and Wayland, integrates well with modern hardware, and has a vast ecosystem of applications. While Plasma used to have a reputation for being buggy or heavy, recent versions have largely shed that image. The sheer number of options can be overwhelming for beginners, but for power users and enthusiasts, Plasma is hard to beat. Finally, at the very top of many rankings, or at least sharing the top spot, is GNOME. GNOME takes a very different approach compared to KDE Plasma. Instead of offering endless customization, 
Gnome focuses on a specific vision of how a desktop should work. The Gnome shell emphasizes simplicity, productivity, and distraction-free work. Features like the activities overview, dynamic workspaces, and integrated search are designed to streamline how users interact with their system. Gnome is often criticized for being restrictive and for removing traditional desktop elements, but it is also praised for its consistency, accessibility, and strong design language. Gnome has excellent Wayland support, strong backing from major companies, and a large developer community. With extensions, users can modify Gnome to better suit their preferences, though this can sometimes lead to breakage after updates. Despite its controversies, Gnome remains one of the most polished and forward-thinking Linux desktop environments. In the end, ranking Linux desktop environments from worst to best is less about declaring winners and losers and more about understanding trade. Some environments prioritize nostalgia, others focus on minimalism, some push visual design, and others emphasize power and flexibility. What feels like the worst desktop environment to one user might be the perfect solution for another. The true strength of Linux lies in this diversity. Instead of being locked into a single vision, users can choose the environment that best matches their hardware, workflow, and personal taste. Whether you prefer the raw power of KDE Plasma, the focused simplicity of GNOME, the comfort of Cinnamon, or the speed of XFCE, Linux offers an option that can feel truly yours.